Hello my crafty friends, it's Ellie from Periwinkle Matilda and I'm here with a um, video of um, something different. This isn't paper crafting, but I've had some requests from some of my subscribers that they want me to do some sewing. And in my Facebook group, uh, Periwinkle Matilda Handmade Journals, um, I asked whether they would be interested in <clears throat> seeing how I make these um, hanging crocheted Christmas hand towels. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to use acrylic paints and paint a design on the front. And then I'm going to attempt to show you how to crochet this topper. I don't have a pattern. I usually just wing it, but I'm going to try to show you how I do it. So before we get started, I also want to show you um, this Christmas doll that I crocheted. I love to crochet amigurumi. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Um, but I make <clears throat> crocheted dolls and animals and all kinds of fun things. So it's kind of hard for you to, here you can see her like this, but she's really cute. And I have a lot of really cute ones. So yeah, I'll put her away and then I will show you what I do. So I take a full size, um, tightly woven 100% cotton hand towel that I have been finding at um, places like Home Goods and TJ Maxx and Marshalls. And this particular one, um, this actually came to, I have two pieces here that came from one piece. So what I did was I just, um, so it was connected like this. I just cut it in half keeping it folded and then I fold it over the top and I now I'm ha now I'm sewing with a sewing machine but last year when I made them I sewed um, I actually did the bottom <clears throat> I sewed by hand so you don't have to have a sewing machine you can um, sew by hand and I think we'll use this one so I get two towels I can make two towels out of one which is great so I was thinking that I, on this one I would do a gingerbread man I just love gingerbread men and I have made a gingerbread man one in the past but it's sold so what I do is I just take a cookie cutter to use as a stencil and I don't know if the pencil is going to work. I might need to use a pen. We'll see. And I just draw around it. Mm, barely worked. Let me see if I can get it a little bit better. I think I have, hold on a second. I think I have a better pencil that will work. If I can remember where I put it. Oh, and of course I can't remember. So that's the square one. So I'll just try to do this again. But I was going to use my, um, I don't even remember what it's called, but it's a softer, a softer um, pencil that shows up darker.
just going to keep going around here. Okay, that's a little better. I think I can work with that. So um, I need to get brown because I was going to do, I need to get brown paint here. I was going to do the, um, the, what is this called? Wreath. But then I changed my mind and decided that I want to do the gingerbread. So bear with me a sec. Let me see if I have enough brown paint in here. Willow's jumping up. I meant to buy some more brown acrylic paint. There is some in here. Well, let's just see what we can do here with this. So I'm just getting a paintbrush. Got my water. Aha, uh -huh. I'm able to get some paint out. No, Willow wants to jump down, but he can't because no, he'll get into my paint. No, Willow. Get down, buddy. Okay. So you just carefully paint on the fabric. That's the reason why I like the tightly woven cotton, because it's pretty easy. It's like a canvas. Pretty easy to <clears throat> paint on. Let me see if it's bleeding through. Yes, it's bleeding through. So you will want to put a piece of paper and just do it on one layer. I forgot that that's what I did. And you might want to paint before you sew it. But let's see what we can do here to make this work. Okay. Kind of awkward, but we'll get that to work. All right. And that got a little bit smudged. You might be able to wipe it off you do it quickly before it dries. That'll be okay. All right. So I hope everyone's doing well today. The pencil will wash out. The acrylic paint won't. It'll just soften up in the washing machine. Just take your time. I don't know what the best, I don't know what the best brush would be to use. And I might have to do a couple coats to go over top of this um, red polka dot. If it's a solid color, it's easier. No, Willow. Just trying to get to my container of water.
And this is just cheap acrylic paint. I think I got it at Michael's. I guess this weekend I'll need to <clears throat> go get some more brown because I totally for forgot to get more. I do like the polka dots with the gingerbread man cats just love crafting he's watching my every move <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I'm using the right brush for this, but. I think it'll come out okay. Sorry, I'm quiet. <laughs> I'm trying to concentrate on my lines. Okay. So like I said, sometimes you might need to do a couple coats. It's a goopy there. I think I'll make that foot just a little bit bigger since I got that smudge there. There, that looks better. And actually, that foot looks a little bigger anyway. Definitely does. So I might have to make it a little bit more even. So we'll make this foot bigger. probably needs to be even bigger <clears throat> although I do like the shape of this one better but... there oh, 
happy. I'm just neatening up the edges. Make the arm a little bigger to match the other side. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry this with my blow dryer and I will be back once it's dry. Okay, so I'm back. So it's dry and it's looking pretty good. I'm going to add um, the details. So I'm using white, green, and red. <clears throat> And let's see if I can get the eyes in the right place. Okay. Now we'll do a smile, just putting where I want my smile to begin and end, just helps me. Yeah, it's not too bad. And then I'm going to do the little squiggles. No, Willow. Just trying to get my water. My paint water. Just take your time, do it slow. Okay, now we'll do some on the legs. Looking cute. All right. Switch colors. Give him a green bow.
just make it bigger and bigger. I'm trying to get the right angle. Okay, I think that looks all right. And now, we'll do the red buttons. Okay, cute. So now I think I'll let this, um, I'm gonna dry it with the blow dryer and then I'm going to let it sit and cure for like an hour. Probably would be best to let it cure overnight. So when you make this, if you can be patient and let it cure overnight um, and then do the crochet topper but for the video purposes, I'm just gonna give it an hour, so I'll be back in about an hour. Okay, so I'm back. It has cured for about an hour. Hopefully it'll be okay. I think it turned out cute. Take the paper out from underneath that I was using for the bleed through. Okay. <clears throat> So, I haven't done this for a while, so let's see if I can remember how I did this. And I usually start from the left to right. And we're just going to go... I'm using a darning needle. And we're going to put a blanket stitch on here. Um, I'm going to... Get about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm gonna get ten lengths. I probably don't need that much. Hopefully, I, I will have enough. And let's get started here. I've never done a sewing tutorial or a crochet tutorial so let's see how this will go okay so and this is my way of doing it it's probably not it's probably not how everyone does it so I'm going to leave a little bit of a tail and I'm going to go back through and up and out again. That's going to get it started for the First stitch. Now I'm going to go through this loop and then <clears throat> I'm going to go through the top and I'm just eyeballing how big to make my stitches. You can make them closer together, further apart. I don't think it really matters. See, so now we have two stitches. I'm going to go through that loop. And then through another area. So 
see how we're starting to make our blanket stitch loops then I'm going to go back through and then I guess I'm going every quarter inch I'm making my stitches about a quarter inch go through it again You want it pretty tight, but you don't want it too tight that it's going to pull it. You don't want it to like sag, but. And they don't have to be exactly spaced. Because once you start crocheting, you're not even going to really see it. And again, I didn't use any instructions. I just <clears throat> kind of made it all up myself, which is how I usually do things. Do things my way. Not always what people would think is the right way, <clears throat> but it works for me. And I usually try out a different things until I find something that works for me. So it works. Trying to stay in screen here. My kittens are a bit hyper at the moment, and I'm hoping that they won't come in here because they love yarn. <laughs> I probably should shut the door and just deal with the banging if they bang for me to open. But we'll see how it goes. This one's going to be so cute. I'm going to use it this Christmas in place of the wreath one. Or maybe I'll use both. I'll continue to use the wreath one when the wreath one's in the wash. I'll put this one now before I use it I do wash it for a lot of reasons but I like it to be softer I like for the acrylic paint to soften not really soften but it just it's hard to explain but it like the dryer cures it the washing and drying just really softens it and cures it and you'll see that it um, it looks really nice. It takes the shine away. It makes it more matted. It just makes it more like it's part of the material. So we're almost done with this part, which is good. So you don't want to make it too tight, but you don't want to make it too loose either because you don't want it to look, you don't want it to pull up too high when you're crocheting.
and I got this um, embroidery needle. I don't know exactly what it's called, but I got it in the craft section at Walmart. So look for it. It comes in a pack of two. They're really inexpensive. They're very sharp, but it has a nice size eye that you can put your yarn through. And um, because the needle is so sharp, it it's a big help for going through material like this. Yeah, I used too much. But I wanted, I didn't want to run out, so probably only need like five times the length so try that instead of 10 because it looks like I really didn't need that much okay so the last one when I come to the end here I'm gonna go through this part To make it like that and I'm going to go through that loop again and then I'm going to take it I'm trying to remember how I did that Try to go um, through a few of these. Like that. To hide it. And then skip this one and go through here. Like that. And then cut it off. And then We're going to do the same on this end. And then skip this one, go back, these, like that, and then cut it off. Okay, so we got our blanket stitch done. Looking good so far. Now what you're going to want to do, I have bigger needles. This one's a six. I think this one may work. We'll give it a try. So I'm using my crochet needle, a number six. I don't know if you guys like this, but I made this handle out of, um, oh, I forget what that clay is called. I'll, um, 
If you want to know about it, send me a message or a comment below and ask, and then I'll um, answer you. But it's different clay, clay colored clays that I got from Michael's, and you just put it around it, and then you bake it in the oven. Is it called Sculpty? I don't know. I have a package in my drawer there. Um, I can look it up for you, and it just, um, I love it. I actually have a really cute one that I put um, my initial E and then I um, made a heart. It's so cute. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use red and green. And I'm not sure <coughs> my, um, my yarn is a little tangled. So I'm hoping, let me see here. I'm hoping I won't have a hard time. I hope it won't tangle up. Hopefully it'll be okay. Okay, this one, um, this one's fine. The green's fine. It's just the red's kind of funky. So what I do is I, here's the end. I, um... I use two pieces of yarn so that um, I can make it thicker. And we're just going to do a normal um, crochet. We just want to Sometimes the first stitch is a little hard to get into, but once you get in there, and actually the first row can be a little hard to deal with, but once you get that first row going, okay, so then <clears throat> I'm going to make a slip knot. I'm not. I'm going to just loop it like that and pull it through. Yeah, you may want to make the first stitch here, the first blanket stitch, a little looser. I think I might have made it a little bit too tight. There we go. So we want to keep, I'm going to keep a long tail and then I'm going to deal with that later. Um, and actually, I'm going to start on this end. That was easier on that end. <clears throat> so we're going to pull it through. Leave a tail and then we're going to crochet one I think I'll crochet two and then go into the next one And the next, we're just going to crochet all the way across. Hope you can see this. So it's just a single crochet. two colors look nice together. You can do um, two of the same color if you want. Okay, 
can get a little tricky with the two. Just got to make sure that you get them both on your hook. When you get to the end where you've um, sewn your tail in, you just go under both of those so that you're catching it all. And then the last one. This is the one I made too tight, I think. Okay, so now we're going to turn, we're going to crochet one, and then we're going to go to the top of this one. So when you crochet one, it um, gives you a little turning room. It keeps it square. So I didn't make, um, I didn't make these stitches tight enough, but that's okay. We'll see how it looks when we're done. Maybe I made them too far apart. going to put another one on the end here. There. And then turn. Yeah, that won't look bad. It will be okay. So I've already done the turning stitch. You can tell when you, or maybe not, maybe I didn't. So when you get to the end, you want to crochet an extra one and then start your crochets. See how it keeps it square. And I taught myself how to crochet, so I probably don't even hold the crochet needle right, but it works for me.
I hold my crochet needle like a like a utensil and I don't use I don't do the little flippy on the on the pinky but it works for me okay so make sure that you don't forget the last one so that you keep it nice and square because we don't want to um, start tapering off just yet. Okay. It's looking good, people. Okay, so now I'm going to turn. Crochet one for our turn. And then crochet all the way across again. When I get to the end of this row, I'm going to look at the other one that I made and see how many rows I did before I started tapering off. These actually work up really fast. They make really cute gifts. They sell well at craft, craft fairs. And I just, I think they're so handy. I love having a towel attached to my oven. always have to have one and I have them for different seasons okay so let me let me see how many rows I did here I think maybe I did three or four rows. I think I'll do one more row <clears throat> and I already did my turning stitch. I think I'll do one more row and then, um, then we'll start tapering off. And if it doesn't look right, I can take the row out. I just do them all by eye. They're all kind of different. All right, so now we're going to start tapering it off. I'm going to chain one and turn. And now what I do is I start skipping stitches. So I go through the, the first loop, pull a loop through, go through the next loop, pull a loop through, and then I pull, whoop, let's do that again. So go through the first loop, pull a loop through, go through the next loop, pull a loop through, and then you're going to pull the yarn through all three loops. And then we're going to um, 
we're going to do four regular. And then we're going to do three together again. So go through, pull a loop, go through, pull a loop, then pull it through three. And then we're going to do three regular. And then we're going to do pull a loop through, pull a loop through, and pull through three. So we're reducing our stitches. One, two, three, and that didn't really work out. Let's just do one, two, and then we'll pull well, I was able to do three and then pull through the last two. Did I go through that right hole? Let's see. It's this one. <clears throat> Then we're going to do our turning stitch. And now we're going to reduce our stitches again. One, two, pull through, and then we're going to do three stitches. regular crochet. I don't know that I got that right. Now we're going to do two together. Then we're going to do three, <clears throat> three regular. Then two together. Then we're going to end it with the regular. And then we're going to do a turning stitch and I think we'll reduce it one more time. So we're going to do two together. Then three regular. Then two together. And three regular. Actually, I'm just going to do two and then two together. Okay. And then I always forget about this last stitch down here, so. We'll do these two together. So 
sometimes it's really hard to get that last stitch especially with this type of big needle I will get it. Okay, now we're going to do the turning stitch. And now that we have this shape and this width left, we can start working straight up the loopy hook. So now we're just going to do straight across. The hard part's done. No, no, no. <laughs> My cat jumped up and tried to pull it. Okay. So again, I did my turning stitch. And now I'm just going to stitch straight across. Single crochet. Chain one and turn. Starting to look cute. So I'm going to do I'm going to do 10 rows and then I'll be back to show you what I do for the buttonhole. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I think I did about 13 rows. And now what we want to do is <clears throat> we want to um, make a buttonhole. So I'm going to count how many stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have ten stitches. So um, I want to do four stitches because we want to put it in the center. So we'll do four, four regular crochet stitches. Two. three, four, and then we want to crochet two and skip two and then crochet the last four.
Let me back up because that didn't work out right. Okay, that's our turning crochet stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <clears throat> four chain two skip two and then crochet four Drop the stitch. Okay, now we want to do our turning crochet. And now we're going to stitch all the way across. But when I get to these two that we skipped that we did the chain to, I'll show you what I do. So <clears throat> these two that we skipped, we're just going to go in this hole and crochet two and then proceed. Chain one and turn. See, now you have your hole, and now we're going to um, finish it off. You can either finish it off with shells, if you know how to do that, but I'm just going to um, slip stitch, so I'm just going to go in and pull through instead of wrapping around and pulling um, another loop through I'm just doing it like this so we're not really adding another stitch we're just finishing this last row of stitches off We're going to pull it through, cut it, see how nice that looks, um, and then we're going to sew our ends in with our tapestry needle. Actually, I think I'll use one of these needles with a bigger eye. This is a bad one. Do 
use that one. And what I do is I just run my needle through these stitches. And then I skip a stitch and I go back through again. Cut it off. And then we're going to do this end here. I'm going to want to go through these initial stitches that I made. And then back through, skipping this stitch. Okay. So that's done, and now what we have left and that doesn't look bad and once it's hanging you won't even notice it but you can make them closer together if you want um, and then you just sew a button on and I was not prepared getting a button so I'm gonna pause the camera get a button and I'll be right back okay, I'm back so I decided to use this button it's not really red but it's got some dark like browns and like orangey it'll do for now if I find a better button I can always um, change it out so let's sew on the button and do I want to use green I think I'll use red or maybe green because the red might clash with that orangish. Anyway, we'll give this a try. So I'm going to use my sharp tapestry needle because I'm only needing to pull through one piece of yarn. Okay. And a 
I like to put I like to put my button about right there. So I'm gonna go in. I go like in the middle of a of a stitch. You don't really want to go in that hole. Go in to that stitch. You want to leave a tail. I like these needles because the eyes are not big, so they go through buttons. And then you're going to go through another, another stitch. Not a hole, but a stitch. That looks cute. Now I'm going to go back in here and then I'm going to wrap my yarn around twice so it makes a little spacer kind of thing. Then go through another stitch back to the back. And then we're just gonna, sorry, my cat knocked the camera. So then we're just gonna tie three knots. Cut it off, you don't really see it. There you have it. How cute is that? So I'm sorry for the tutorial if it was a little confusing, but like I said, I just kind of wanted to show you the process of what I do. I'm sure that you can um, search in YouTube for other um, crocheted kitchen towel toppers, hanging toppers, um, and you can follow those tutorials as well. Um, but I just wanted to give you this idea of painting. I don't think anybody's done that before. Um, so yeah, I use the acrylic paints. Very, very cute. You can do all kinds of designs, and they make great gifts. And they sell well, too. So thank you again for joining me. Um, I will be having more videos coming up. I try to do something every day or every few days. So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, hit the bell so that you'll be notified of all upcoming videos. And thank you again for um, watching. Have a great rest of your day. Stay safe, be well, and until next video, bye-bye friends.